Hey, I'm Brandon, and today we are checking out the Nolan N70-2X helmet. This is going to be a great option for touring and adventure riders out there, and this is going to be something that is very similar to the N44, if you're familiar with that model that came out in 2014, but it's got some ADV flair, right, geared towards those riders out there that might be doing some off-roading with this peak visor. That's the big giveaway, of course. You've got an internal sun visor, which is nice to have that versatility, and then the chin bar is fully removable. It doesn't rotate back. It can actually come completely completely off of the helmet. Now I will note, if you are doing some serious highway miles, this helmet is very similar to the functionality and the you know features and benefits to the GT version. So if most of your time is spent on the highway, maybe take a look at that version within Nolan's line. It's gonna be very similar, but it won't have the peak visor and it's got some additional uh, versatility, but it does include a peak visor actually in the box, but it won't be as big and as stout as this one is uh, for those ADV riders out there. Let's get into the nitty gritty details here. Polycarb shell, you're looking at two shell sizes and two e EPS. Now that shell breakdown, you're looking at an extra small to a medium in one shell, and then we've got a large to a 3XL in that second shell. So that's the shell breakdown there. Looking at four pounds in overall weight, not terrible considering I've got an internal sun visor. I've got a few mechanisms that allow this chin bar to be pulled off, which if you pull that off, that'll help you save some weight. And then you've got that large peak visor, of course, as I mentioned before. So a lot going on uh, with this helmet. So four pounds isn't terrible. Obviously, I like helmets that are a good bit lighter than that. I'm sure most of us do, but at this particular price range, coming in around 350 bucks, and given the versatility that it has, I'm not gonna knock them too hard there on the overall weight. Let's start off with some of the finer details here. We've got an air intake right here, very easy to manipulate with a gloved hand. And as we swing our way towards the top, these air intakes are not easy to open. These are unfortunately the same air intakes that you're gonna find on the GT version. Um, and they're just kind of a pain to open and close, especially trying to find your way with a gloved hand in between that peak visor and to open and close these. They're already tough without having a peak visor in the way. So that's one of my gripes with this particular helmet. Um, hopefully on the next iteration, we'll see a little bit more refinement with that, something that's a little bit easier to manipulate uh, as you're riding down the road. Now swinging around to the side and to the back, you can see it's an overall pretty basic design. Again, this shell design is pretty much right on par with the GT version. I think it's actually the same, just slight differences to accommodate the peak visor. So very basic overall shell design. Swinging over here to the left-hand side, we've got the Incom system. It is set up, excuse me, the Incom system is not included, but you have a gate right here to open this up and it will accommodate that system as it is designed to integrate fully into this helmet. So you've got this little door right there and then you can actually unscrew the back right here and that is where the battery is going to go for that communication system. Now I will note, you can bring your own Bluetooth communication system to the party. It's got speaker cutouts on the inside, so it should accommodate most uh, uh, communication systems on the market. So if you've got your own already and not something you're interested in, uh, that's certainly something it should accommodate pretty easily. Now the shield itself, I like the center locking right there. Just clicks into place, very simple and effective. Um, you've got a few detents incorporated. It is pin lock ready with the pin lock insert included in the box as well. Internal sun visor, very easy to manipulate. It's spring loaded, so you can simply click that. It's gonna retract. It's got a few different positions in there, um, and then it locks in place there. Personally, I would love to see this go down a little bit lower. I think that's a, a common uh, complaint with most helmets that have an internal sun visor. And this one I think could go a little bit lower. It's actually lower than some of the other Nolan helmets I've experienced. So certainly better, but I think uh, you know, in that more aggressive riding position, I think a little bit more coverage would have been beneficial for a lot of riders out there. But anywho, let's go ahead and retract that. I'm gonna show you, you can see these metal tabs right here on the top of this chin bar. You kind of press those. And that's it. That's gonna allow you to take off the chin uh, completely. You can see you've got your little chin skirt included right there, but it's that easy to remove it, to put it back into place and to take it off. And then they come with these little pieces right here. You can actually plug this up so you're not just having these gaping holes right here on the sides. And then if you do want to remove the face shield altogether, they actually come with the plates. So you can remove the peak visor and the shield and put these plates on there. And that's just gonna make sure it's nice and clean on the side. So I like that they're giving you those extra components. There's a bit of versatility included with this particular helmet, right? And you still can use that internal sun visor if you wish to do so. The other note I wanted to make, even with the chin attached, I know ADV riders like to use goggles as well. 
well as the face shield. Um, so if that's something you're looking to do, you can certainly do so. I would say stay away from uh, goggles with very large fields of vision because it is going to be a little bit snug in the particular area with the chin in place. There's not a whole lot of room to accommodate those, you know, something like the 100% Armegas are a good example. Those are pretty large and it's just not going to fit in there very well. We tried a few options. So your average goggles, I don't think you're going to have any problems with those. But once you start moving up to the more premium options with a super wide field of vision, uh, that's where you're going to run into a little bit of trouble fitting those. Let's move into the inside of the helmet. And if I didn't mention before, it's DOT only, and the internal shape is going to be an intermediate to round oval internal shape, a bit more elongated front to back uh, than it is side to side, but certainly an important note there, not your standard uh, issue intermediate oval helmet here. So let's go ahead and remove some of the liner here. Oh yeah, I should point out before I get going, excuse me, sorry, sorry. This right here, you're gonna see these cinch cords, right? I'm gonna try to prevent this from squeaking. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But you're gonna see these cinch cords right here. There's actually, just underneath that, that liner right here, you can see there's some additional material and that cord runs along that perimeter right there. So as you pull on these, it's gonna snug it down around the neckline, which is nice if it's cold outside, you wanna retain a little bit more heat. You can actually pull that, cinch it down a little bit more and it creates a better seal. And it also helps reduce some uh, additional ambient wind noise surrounding you and things like that. So some people might find that a little bit gimmicky, but it does work. Is it dramatic? Not really a dramatic change in my opinion, but uh, I like where they're going with it. I don't, I'm certainly not gonna knock them for that. So let's work our way to the interior. Ratchet chin strap, pretty straightforward. Go ahead and pull this out. Gotta kind of wrestle this and all comes out kind of in one big piece here. We gotta wrestle that strap through. Get this all off in one big piece. And as I mentioned before, it does accommodate that Incom system and you can bring your own Bluetooth to the party there. We'll take a look at those speaker pockets in just a moment. But first, I gotta wrestle that strap right out of here. Oh, I see what happened. We got a little elastic here. This is really fun doing on camera and everyone surrounding me is just kind of laughing in the background. It's great though, it's great. They're, they're good friends. But as we wrestle this out, you're gonna see it's gonna come out in one big piece here. There we go, we finally got it out of there. Um, that's the headliner. It's a Klima Cool liner, very comfortable. No gripes with that whatsoever. And then on the inside, this is rather unique. This is something I'm not really a big fan of, but these pieces right here just kind of come out of place. And this is part of the EPS. This is part of, you know, you can see this little foam material. That's where the speaker is going to go on the inside of the helmet. But the fact that this just pops out of place, um, don't really love that. Don't love that design, something unique that uh, we don't normally see with motorcycle helmets. So it's not very confidence inspiring. In addition to that, I mean, that's, that's not great. These are all made and manufactured in Italy, which is awesome, uh, you know, but I was expecting a little bit more, um, you know, precision and refined quality. I mean, this is just very, very squeaky. So just something to be cognizant of if you are checking out this helmet, it is gonna squeak on you quite a bit. But again, you do have the speaker area. That is uh, something you can remove that foam padding, accommodate those speakers. You've got some decent channels on the inside, nothing overly dramatic. I think those could be a little bit better as well. And I think the vents themselves could certainly be better uh, overall just to help circulate some airflow. And knowing that most ADV riders are gonna be utilizing this, you know, off-road a little bit, you're building a little bit of heat. I think the ventilation could be better. But of course, you can always just pop that shield up, you know, wear some goggles and get tons of airflow moving through there. But it's still important that it circulates the entire head, right, to help dissipate some of that heat. So I think there's a few things that could be refined. I think they could, uh, you know, on the future iteration of this particular helmet, hopefully they'll address some of the things and some of the, you know, some of the negatives that we found with this particular helmet. But if you're looking for kind of a touring ADV style helmet with a bit of versatility with the internal sun visor, being able 
able to remove the chin bar altogether, this could be a good option for you. Just keep in mind some of those gripes, some of those um, things that we don't love so much about the helmet. At 350 bucks and knowing that it's made in Italy, just expecting a little bit more out of them. But of course, if you're looking for more details, feel free to click that info button. That will take you over to the product page. You can take a closer look at some of the other color options and some finer details there if you want to. And as always, if you have any questions about this helmet or any other gear you might be interested in, please don't hesitate to reach out to our customer service team. They're all riders, more than happy to get you squared away. Thanks for hanging out with us for a bit, taking a closer look at the Nolan N70-2X helmet. I'm Brandon, keep it pinned. Thank you.